Come on, God is good. Amen, 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 amen. So we're going to get right into this word, um, and uh, we're going to get, get it moving, all right? I want to dive right in because I only got 40 minutes, and uh, we're going to cover some, uh, cover some base here. So I want to just cover some natural things real quick, just real quick, and then we're going to pray and get right into the word. First and foremost, Paul had a doctor, Dr. Luke, on his team. Luke the physician wrote about many miracles that Jesus did. So Jesus did many miracles. Luke was a physician, and he was on board. He saw the miracles that Jesus did, and I just think that that is just so amazing. So I say all that to say, you need a doctor. Who's on your team? Who's your doctor? I remember, uh, y'all remember uh, Who's Your Daddy? (laughs) <laughs> Who's your doctor? <laughs> Who is your doctor? Number two, when and if you are ever diagnosed, just know that that is just it. It is just a diagnosis. It's a diagnosis. Never say, I have. Never say, I have this or I have that. We all know you have what you say, right? Right? I have a house, I have clothes on, I have a car, I got shoes on, I have, I, and I want to keep those things, right? But I don't want to keep things, I do not want to claim things that I don't want. So don't claim sickness in your life by saying you have it. Saying I was diagnosed isn't claiming, but it is recognizing and acknowledging. Are you with me? I was diagnosed, you're acknowledging it. You're recognizing, so it's not like you're doing something that's just, no, you're acknowledging it. That's better than saying, I have. I don't want sickness. I'm not going to claim it, right? And so don't go around saying, I have. Number three, whenever taking medications, take them in the name of Jesus by giving him thanks for supplying healing in your bodies and declaring total healing. When you take that medicine, you put it, you drink, put it in your mouth, drink your water and say, Lord, I thank you for this medicine that you have supplied, but I know that your will is for me to be healed in Jesus' name, all right? Kenneth, H- Kenneth W. Hagen once said, it's, it's this great, I love this. Um, he said that the natural and the spiritual, you guys have heard this before, works together, Right? and makes an explosive force for God. Now, let me cover a few things here, um, biblical things here. In the Old Testament, and you guys follow me um, as best as you can. In the Old Testament, Adam and Eve disobeyed. They sinned, and sin caused the sickness to enter into the earth today. Sin causes sickness to enter into the earth today. Some sicknesses are self-inflicted. We all know this, just covering some base. And some sicknesses come as a result of sins of the world, right? Exodus 15, 26. I'm reading the NIV version. It says, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all of his decrees, I will not bring any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, many of us get caught up on the fact that God said, I will not bring uh, sicknesses on you as I brought them on the Egyptians. Now, listen, many of us have been reprimanded by our parents. How many of you had parents or guardians that they uh, reprimanded you for doing wrong, right? whether it was your parent or legal guardians, they would either take something away from you or they would give you a good old-fashioned whooping, right? Listen, my mom was very quick with those hands, right? And so although we got whooped, you know, I I would get whooped, all my brothers and sisters, we would get whooped. Um, They would always tell me where I went wrong and communicated that they didn't want to whip me, that it wasn't their will, and that they were going to do, they were doing this because they loved me and they wanted to correct my wrongdoings. And then the pain began, right? So in the Old Testament, yes, God would reprimand. I'm, this is just keeping it real. This is in the Bible. In the Old Testament, God would reprimand disobedience with sickness. Honestly, how else would he reprimand 
them by saying, uh, you wrong, you did wrong. Sometimes that ain't enough. I needed a whooping sometimes, right? So in that time, yeah, he would reprimand them with sicknesses. That was this way of correcting their wrongdoings. Listen, there had to be consequences and repercussions for the sin in that time. I said all that to say, it was never God's will that he would ever put sickness on people. It was never his will, and it will never be his will to put sickness on anyone in the Old Testament. But because of disobedience, sin, wrongdoing, God couldn't whoop nobody, so sickness it was, right? Again, Old Testament, that's Old Covenant stuff. It's very important that we know and that we are living under and out of the new covenant with understanding the will of God. Yes, we have the old covenant, uh, covenant, covenant in this word. We can learn things. We can learn the ways of God and different things of that nature. But thank God there is a new covenant through Jesus Christ. And that is where we need to identify out of the new covenant. When we know the new covenant, we can know and rest assured that the will of God is good and it's for the best for us, right? In the New Testament, yes, there were sick people on earth due to sin, but we begin to see God doing some things. We begin to see God shifting some things as promised in the Old Testament through Jesus. We see Jesus healing the sick. We see him even raising the dead. Jesus completed a new covenant that promised many things from the Old Testament prophets. One of the most important things that was promised to us was healing. Isaiah 53, 5. It says, but he was wounded. We know what it says. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed, right? By his stripes, we are healed. First Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes? Jesus stripes, you were healed. We are healed by his stripes. We are healed, right? It was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah and then solidified by Jesus. He, in fact, received the stripes on his back and you are healed. Come on, say it. By his stripes, by his stripes. I am healed. I am. Come on, say it again. By his stripes, by his stripes. I, am I am healed. God and Jesus created an amazing way to demolish sickness being the result of sin through death and resurrection of Jesus Christ by his blood. Listen to me very closely. Now, this is a popular belief that I'm about to close it on up so that we can all be on the same page. God is not putting sickness on you to teach you something. He's not doing that. We're under the new covenant. He's not teaching you anything by putting sickness upon you. God teaches us through his word and by his Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So if he's teaching us through his word under the new covenant and by the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us, that is his way of teaching, not putting sickness on us. It's the Holy Spirit's job to teach us and lead us and guide us and bring things to our remembrance, such as what I'm bringing to you tonight, that is which, according to his word, John 14 and 15 covers this. John 14 and 15 covers the role of the Holy Spirit to lead us and to teach us, right? Also, the Holy Spirit brings the conviction and brings us to repentance which ultimately brings us to the presence of God through Christ Jesus. So I'll say this again, that under the new covenant, God does not, he's not bringing sickness on you to teach you a lesson. So do not bring up the story Job to me. That's old covenant. I don't want to hear it. Thank God I know the story. We can learn from the story, but that is old covenant. Again, we are living out of the new covenant, right? Amen. We got to know the new covenant. We got to know the new covenant 
in order to live out of the new covenant. Although we can learn from the story of Job, Job, it is not the new covenant. Under the new covenant, we have got to stop blaming God for what the devil is doing. He is relentless, and he's going to keep doing this. He's going to keep putting sickness out there. Stop blaming God for the sicknesses due to your own sin. Just keeping it real tonight. Sometimes we let things in. We accept things. Repent, move on, and accept healing. Right? All right. God doesn't need to do no bringing sicknesses upon us when we got the Holy Spirit to teach us and lead us. When we got the Word of God to lead us and teach us and the Holy Spirit to bring convictions and things of that nature. 2 Timothy 3.16. It says here, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, woman of God, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We have the Word of God to teach us and to correct us. We have the Word of God to correct us, not sickness to correct us. The Word of God. Let's pray. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your greatness. We thank you, Lord, that you are here, and where your Spirit is, there is freedom. And so we thank you, Lord, for your Spirit being made available here. We thank you, Lord, for freedom reigning in this place. We thank you, Lord, because you're here, supernatural healings are taking place right in this moment. Those that are sitting in this room and those that are watching, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. I decrease and you increase, Father. Now, let one life leave out the exact same way that they walked in. But wisdom, revelation, and knowledge takes place tonight. In Jesus' name, we say... Amen. Amen. I grew up attending a word church, a word of faith church, and I was taught uh, faith at a very, 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 very young age. I learned about faith in children's church. I learned about faith in, in youth. Side note, get your kids in church on Sundays and Wednesdays because the word of faith is being taught, and they're going to need this word. They're going to need it. So get them in here. I was, I was that kid. I was in church every Sunday, every Wednesday, and that word was being put into my heart, into my soul. I mean, man, what an amazing time. I was taught and was able to be in services with amazing greats that we know of, such as Oral Roberts, right, and Kenneth Copeland, and Dad Hagen, and Marilyn Hickey, and Morris Cirillo, all of these amazing people preachers, teachers, I was able to soak and get the word of faith in my heart, in my soul, and I thank God for it. There came a time, though, when I had to use what was taught. I had to use what was taught. I had to stand on the word. I had to use every single word that was given to me when I was a, te when I was a kid, when I was a youth. When I was in 2013, my wife and I, we had just got married, and we had moved to Georgia, and we started a ministry there. And um, as we were doing ministry and things of that nature, um, my mom was diagnosed um, with multiple sclerosis. Long story short, she had begun to have some very bad symptoms um, that I didn't like, nor did she like. I encouraged my mom, um, as she had moments of faith, and then sometimes there were moments of just accepting it. I remember having phone conversations of, us, you know, she's trying to figure out how to live with this thing. There was moments of strength, and then there was moments of weakness. It was just weakness, you know? And um, that's normal. That sometimes happens. We're going to just keep it real in here tonight. But you got to be able to bounce back, and it's so important to have community and people around you that's going to get you back on track in those moments, right? When we're believing for healing, man, it's so important for us to get back on track and have that community. And so I say all that to say that it was during that time, you know, where I had a heart-to-heart -heart with my mom. And you know, I wanted to make sure that we were on the same 
page, and I wanted to know that if I had, if she would give me the authority to speak life into her body, to speak the word of God over her. We had to have a heart-to-heart, and once we got that heart-to-heart, I was able to effectively minister to her and encourage her and keep her in the word, standing on the word. And through that and that conversation, just give you an example. Whenever pastor or whoever is up here and they do a healing line, you're accepting that spiritual authority for them to lay hands on you and you recover, right? You're, you're saying, yes, I'm here. You submitting your moment, your body, your will over to them to lay hands for supernatural activity to take place. And so that was the communication that I had with my mom in that moment because I wanted to make sure that we are on the same page. And so we began to you know, speak the word and different things. And I was walking with her through this faith walk. And, you know, it was really awesome because we finally got things back on track where she made a decision that MS, multiple sclerosis, was not from God and didn't have to live with it. She didn't have to live with it. And we were both on the same page, praise God. She changed her mentality, fixed her mind and heart on the word of God, and did exactly what the word of God said. And today, she is walking free from MS. She's sitting right there, right? Well, two years later, uh, the devil tried to kill her, tried to kill her by um, a stomach infection that was possibly caused by a punctured cyst in her stomach. And um, the poison began to spill into her system. Now, mom was in the hospital for four days. As again, I was in Georgia, and this was a few years later. Um, she was in four days before, um, and on a, on a generator before I even found out that she was rushed to the hospital. You better know I was mad. I was very, very upset that I'm finding this out four days later. But you better believe I got in my car and my, I, I drove a car that had bald tires, and it was snowing in Atlanta, in Georgia, all the way through Kentucky and, Na- and t- Tennessee and Ohio, all the way till we got to de- I got to Detroit. Snow, 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 and I'm just thanking the Lord for the blood of Jesus upon my car that I can get all the way here to take dominion over my domain, yeah, to get to that hospital to begin to speak some life into that room, into that body, into the, 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 the doctors and all the people. There had to be a shift because mom wasn't going to die on my watch. She just wasn't going to happen. And the testimony from that is that she's here today alive and well, right? Listen, when you know that heaven lives on the inside of you, that God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, have made an abode on the inside of you. When you know that the power of God is within you and that you can use that power at any moment, at any time to speak against the sickness. When you know that you can plead the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. When you know that life is in your words and you have the ability to speak life. When you know that you can use the name of Jesus against any arrow the devil may try to throw when you know that it is God's will to heal miracles, signs, and wonders can take place. But you got to know it. You got to know that it's God's will for you to be healed. You got to know that it's God's will when you pray for someone that it's God's will for them to be healed, for them to be delivered, for them to be set free. Who want to serve a God that it, he doesn't want the best for you. Come on, that's not the kind of God that we serve. We serve a good God. And tonight I want to talk to you just for a few more minutes about the will of God, his will to heal. Listen, it is God's will. I'm going to say it now. I said it before and I'm going to say it when we end that it is God's will to heal. It's his will to heal you. Now, anytime we, you know, we need healing, the first thing we do, we first start out with prayer. We need, we go right to the Lord and we start to pray. So I just want to cover the ABCs of prayer real quick. And if anybody know, we know the best way to pray or the best way to learn about prayer is by taking a look at Jesus' teaching on prayer. May, Matthew 9, I'm sorry, Matthew 6. And we're actually going to start with the verse 9 and we're going to read through 15. 
Jesus starts here in Matthew 6, verse 9. Jesus says, pray along these lines. Now, just to give you a little ba background, Jesus is reprimanding some, some of these Pharisees, these holier-than-thou people, and he's like, y'all over here acting like you know how to pray, and you're doing all these things, just putting on a show. Let me teach you a few things, right? He's saying that to us tonight, too. He said, look, pray along these lines. Our Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. Now, let me just stop right there. When you begin your prayer, when any time you come before God and his holiness, you always start with acknowledging God with honor and praise. For example, Father God, we thank you. I praise you. I exalt you. You're so good. You're so great, God. I love you so much. You are my God, Jesus. You are the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords. Oh, I acknowledge you right here. I acknowledge you. You go right to the Lord, right? And you start, start out with praise, acknowledging who he is. Our Father, Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. Verse 10, it says, he says here, we ask that your kingdom will come now. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Stop right there. Note, we must be seekers of the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God is God's ruling and reign. The kingdom of God is where God is ruling and reign. So when we say, Lord, we welcome you into this situation to make a ruling, we're saying, Lord, make a ruling. Make your, your will be done. We welcome you in this room. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's ruling, guys, and his reign and his will being done on earth just as it is in heaven. Oh, my God, that is amazing. Why? Because we know what's not in heaven. When we pray God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, what we know is that there's no sickness in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. Come on, somebody. There's no heartache in heaven. There's no spiritual death. There's no confusion in heaven. So when we pray, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you better recognize that when whatever you're praying, it better line up with what's in heaven. What's in heaven, guys? Everybody's healed in heaven. Come on. Everybody's healed in heaven. Everybody's set free in heaven. There's strength in heaven. There's joy in heaven. Come on. There's love. There's peace and happiness in heaven. All the wisdom and revelation is in heaven. Come on. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This tells me that God's ruling will always side with what's in heaven. What's in heaven? His ruling will always side with what's in heaven. His will will always side with healing, whether it's here on earth or in heaven. The will of God does not involve anything that's not in heaven. Come on, that's something that's note. That's, take notes there. That's something that's important. God's will, everything that's in heaven is God's will. And what's not in heaven is not God's will. The will of God doesn't involve anything that's not in heaven. So when we pray, we pray to bring what's in heaven to earth. And that is God's will. Are you with me tonight? I come here on a mission, guys, because I believe when we are all on one accord, yes, we're seeing miracles, signs, and wonders every single Sunday and Wednesday in this church, but when we're all on one accord with the same belief system and we have this tight cohesiveness, you're talking about, oh my God, more miracles, signs, and wonders. That's why I'm really passionate about this, because we need to know what the will of God is. Verse 12. I'm sorry, verse 11. Give us our food again today as usual. Let me stop right there. The will of God, we all know this, is to supply our need. If you're in need of healing, you better believe that God wants to give it to you. It is his will. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our healing. Verse 12, and forgive us of our sins just as you, we are forgiven those who have forget, uh, against us. All the people in heaven, as I said, are forgiven. Through Jesus, we can be forgiven on earth. Thank God for it. 
So anytime you pray, repent for the sins you've committed and the sins that you don't know you committed. It's important for us to do that. Anytime you pray, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you have already forgiven me, but I repent, God, for the sins that I've committed and the sins that I don't know that I've committed. That gets you into the right standing with the Lord, right? Jesus gave us this model prayer and a look into the will of God. Now, following Jesus teaching the people how to pray He's now found in a place of prayer himself. And in this moment, Jesus knew what was coming. Matthew 26 through 36. Sorry, Matthew 26, 36 through 42. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Garden of the Garden of Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it is your will, sorry, oh my father, if it is possible, not if it's your will, you know, a lot of times, you know, we pray and we say, Lord willing, He found his moment in prayer and he said, if it is a way, any way possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Then he came to the disciples, found them there sleeping and said, Peter, what? Could you not watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. And the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away, prayed, saying, oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass from me, Unless I drink it, your will be done. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, your will be done. And he followed the prayer example he gave to us. When he said, let this cup pass from me, he then followed up with your will be done. And I believe when he said that, listen to me, when he said that, your will, not my will, but your will be done, I believe that he had your kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven because he knew that what he was about to encounter was going to open up the door for heaven to populate the earth he knew he knew that well then you guys may be thinking well the bible says in isaiah 53 that it pleased god to bruise jesus so that means that gods get pleasure god get pleasure out of our iniquities no you are not Jesus. Don't try, to ex- don't try to make this out that it's okay for you to be that God is getting pleasure out of your sicknesses and your diseases and iniquity. No, no, no. You're not Jesus. Stop acting. Don't do that. No, no, no. It was done once and for all. The chastisement, the bruising, the beating, it was done once and for all. You don't need to get bruised and beat in sickness to be put on your life. For to be taught anything or to please God. Stop that belief right now. Jesus understood the assignment. He knew that he was the source of God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. But let me point something out to you real quick. Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. The word of God says that God is love. And to show your love to God, you simply obey him. When you love God, you obey him. And the will of God is God's plan and it's his purpose. The will of God is God's plan and his purpose. And when we say, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, know that everything in heaven is under his ruling, which means everything in heaven is under his obedience. It's in obedience. You want the will of God for your life? You obey him. You want healing? Obey him. You want deliverance? Obey his word. You want to be in his will? Obey his word. Jesus says, not my will, but your will be be done. Obey him. When you're in the will of God, 
Come on. You're walking in a place of obedience. In order to be in the will of God, you've got to be in a place of obedience. That's important. Jesus lived that out. He said, not my will, but your will be done. If, I, if this, not my will. Obedience is key for being found in the will of God. Listen to this too, real quick. That when you're in the will of God, whatever happens can be for your good. Listen, anything that happens, anytime the devil tries to put sickness on you or anything that, any arrows that he may throw, you laugh in his face and say, God is going to get the glory out of this. He's going to get the glory out of this. He's going to get the glory out of this. I don't know what you're trying to do, devil, but God is about to get the glory. Ha, 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 ha. You laugh in his face. It's not a time for you to get in fear. It's not a time for you to get afraid. You laugh in his face. And watch God turn it around for your good, but obey him. Now, here's the truth. Here's something that I wanted to throw in real quick. As a Christian, you are also now, as Jesus is the source of heaven on earth, you are also now a source of God's rule and reign and will being done on this earth. God is living on the inside of you. John 14, 15, Jesus, they have made their home on the inside of you. It's about time for us to begin to act like it. Come on and be the source of heaven on earth. I've said, I say this all the time, that my teacher in Bible school said that God has been working with people from, him, from the very beginning, from, his, from the beginning of his career. He's been working with people, and it's nothing has changed there. He wants to work through you. I want to say this as well, real quick. When you're asking the Lord for healing, when you're asking God for anything, be sure that you keep in your heart and in your mind that, God, I want to do your will. I want to do your will on this earth. Heal me so I can continue to love people. Heal me, Lord. So thank you for your healing, God. I can continue to love people. I can continue, God, with healing flowing through my body. I can continue to love people. When you keep God's purpose in your mind ahead of you, you better be glad God can get behind. But if it's all about heal me because I feel sad, I feel bad, I feel disgusted. Oh, I don't like this feeling. Oh, I don't, I get all that. That's great. But when you have the mind that God, I want to be healed for your glory to be used by you. God, I claim I am healed. I'm going to walk. And then you begin to act on it. I love the, the, our pastor, man, because he was diagnosed and he still came here to preach the word of God to us. When you have that mentality that I'm not going to be stopped by what the devil is trying to do, when you have people on your mind and in your heart and that the will of God and his purpose, man, you better believe God is going to back it up. Don't pray with selfishness mentality. He doesn't back that up. He's not down with that. When we pray, we must have on earth as it is in heaven in our hearts, in our minds, and it must come out of our mouths. Why? Because we belong to Christ. Ephesians 1, 3. It says, How we praise God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every blessing in heaven. Come on. Who has blessed us with every blessing in heaven because we belong to Christ. Whatever is in heaven is ours because we belong to Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6.20 that you were bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and your mind. And you say, which are God's? You are children of God. 
You are in, you belong to Christ, you're in the family, and whatever is in heaven, whatever inheritance there is, it is yours. This is what the Bible says. Oh, I love it because it backs it up. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, we know it. Pastor's been saying it for the past two months. Listen to me. You can pray for anything. And if you believe, you have it. It's yours. Jesus said that. So when you pray according to what's in heaven, you belong to Christ. The blessing is yours. Healing is yours. Just as Jesus knew the big picture, not my will, but your will be done, you got to know the big picture as well. You got to know the big picture as well. Yes, God is God, and he can do whatever he wants to do. He also honors his covenant with his creation, which means his will on earth is connected to our faith in him and our obedience to him. I love what Pastor said last week. He said, you can't separate your faith life from your obedience life. That's good. I encourage you to go listen to that message because he keeps saying, he said some other things right after that that's really good. Side note before we end here. The very next scripture um, in Matthew, it talks about, he says to forgive. Sorry, in Mark 11, 23. Um, Sorry, 24, 25, he talks about forgiveness. He says, well, forgive so that you can get what is in heaven. That's what he's saying to you tonight. There's some, there might be someone in here that's dealing with forgiveness, unforgiveness. And God is saying to you tonight, forgive that person so the windows of heaven can open up to you. Forgive. Forgive them, forgive yourself, and accept forgiveness from Jesus, from God. So that the windows of heaven, so the will of God, the purpose of God, can infiltrate your life, your every move that you make. Walk in forgiveness so the windows of heaven can open up to you. If he, uh, Exodus 23, as we close here. It says, you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and water. And I will take sickness from your midst. You know, pastor, whenever he ministers, he always give you a recap, right, of all the points, right? I got one. It is God's will for you to be healed. Period. Everybody stand up. bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your grace, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're in this room, Father. Thank you for telling us tonight that you want us healed, that you want us delivered, that you want us set free, that it is your will that we are healed. Thank you, God. Thank you for making it available to us through Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for opening up the windows of heaven upon us. Thank you that you've given us heaven on earth, that we can have heaven on earth. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that we can have joy and that we can have love and peace and happiness, Lord. Thank you that whatever is in heaven, we can have right now. So we claim that right now. Whatever is in heaven, God, I thank you for it. I claim it. It's mine in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you're in the midst, Father God, and that your will is done in this room right now, that you're bringing clarity and healing right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for it right now. Father God, we thank you, Father, for the pastors that you have given us. Pastor Joe, Pastor Misty, the whole first family, Reverend Judy. We thank you, God, that you've given us such magnificent pastors, pastors that lead by faith. And we thank you, Lord, that with long life, you will satisfy them. 
With long life, you will satisfy them. Lord Jesus, you said that you come to give life and life more abundantly. So we thank you, God, that you've given Pastor Joe life and life more abundantly. We thank you, God, for the doctors that performed this surgery, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you were in the midst of them in that room, that you were using them and working with them. God, I just thank you, Lord, for an amazing surgery that went forth. I thank you, Lord. That from this moment forward, Father God, recovery, supernatural recovery is being made available for pastor right now in Jesus' name. Any kind of thing that tries to come up, we come against you, Satan. You are defeated. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. You will not have the last say. God will have the last say. And he has already said, pastor is healed in Jesus' name. And so we thank you, Lord, for speedy recovery. We thank you, God, that your hand is upon them and that your word is working mightily in pastor's body right now, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that your word is working things out. Every single thing that in his body is lining up according to your word. And God, I thank you right now that there will be nothing lost in Jesus' name. Nothing lost from what the devil has tried to put on him. There will be no, uh, no side effects in Jesus' name. Everything will just line up and be right in place the way that you have ordained it to be. Now, we put our expectations on you, and we believe and we expect that your will is done in the body of our pastor right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Misty, the strength upon her life as she cares for Pastor in this moment and the leading of the Holy Spirit, Father. I thank you, Lord, that she is led by your Spirit in this season, Father God, to walk with Pastor in this moment, Father. I thank you, Lord, for strength over her. We pray strength over her right now, strength in her body. She's healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Come on, let's lift our hands before the Lord. Oh, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We give you all the glory, Father. Oh, we give you all of the honor, Father God. We give you all of the praise. And we say that it is done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Come on, everybody say amen.